What's up, everybody? Sadeep Tuma back here with another NBA draft player breakdown. This time we'll be looking at Patrick Baldwin, the small word, small forward, excuse me, from Milwaukee, who's having a very, you know, disappointing season on a lot of uh, measures. He came in high pedigree, five star guy, top ten recruit. Came in as you know, a guy who was a surefire lottery pick. It looked like, but obviously, as we've seen throughout the years, it's never a surefire thing. But at 6'10", 220, he had a pretty, you know, big body, good skill set for that size, and that was one of the big advantages. But he's come in averaging now, he's only played 12 games a season, I think, believe he's shut down now. He's averaging 12 points a game, but his shooting percentages are just horrendous, right? 34% 20 uh, from the field, really 26% from three-point line. It's, it's not much to, um, you know, write home about, but... It's and it's even more concerning when you look at the competition and the the competition that he's going up against. These are small schools. His his team obviously is not great. He's kind of the main guy, but his his struggles have really pointed toward things that are a bigger point of concern to me at least. And I think the scouts going forward and as he enters the next level, if he chooses to, which I believe he will, but. It kind of starts with his athleticism. You probably didn't see as much in high school because he's just so physically dominant with his size. Um, and I'm sure some of it is the ankle injury is lingering on. But I just can't point it enough onto those two things to really justify his bad play. But like I said, the athleticism. He's, he's he When he's running out there in the, in the open court, he looks a little sluggish. He's an average athlete with the speed, uh, has some deceptive quickness. He can move well enough. But you're talking about him like he's a guy who's you know, 250, 270 pounds. And you're like, okay, that athleticism is fine. That's not the case with him. You need a lot better from there. And that's why he's struggling to, um, you know, create his own shot and do a lot of those things. His shot selection is a big issue. And I think that's where we'll start. He, he you know, he came in. He was touted as this, you know, elite three-point shooter who could strike from range and limitless range. He's got a good stroke, like the, the shooting mechanics. But, and again, I said some of it's probably a product of his team not creating enough. But... Even so, looks that are good aren't always falling for him. But overall, he's just hoisting up shots that are not good, and he needs to be looking for better shots. And what he's doing, obviously, is not helping the team. And we'll see a few examples of that here. You see him over here. He's got the ball in the corner. Takes a couple dribbles, side up defender, steps back. And watch where he's shooting that. This is a perfect contest. Watch the defender. It's almost like scouting report. He knows what's about to come. When, when, when that um, step back comes in, watch the defender's feet, right? Watch the little stutter step, right? You'll see slow motion. He's he's not backing down because he knows it's about to come and just contest it perfectly. And because of that, you get an air ball. Here, one more time. You'll see him faking off the handoff, running off, finally getting the ball here. Takes a couple dribbles. Again, perfect contest. Watch this guy. This defender is literally up in the air before Baldwin's even halfway through his release, right? Watch the defender. Gets up already. Now the release starts. And watch where he is. But again, you're just hoisting up. There's 23 seconds left on the clock. It's not like a, you know, two seconds left on the clock. Have, have to hoist something up. Again, air ball. And this one's even more disappointing. You see him over there in the high post, which you see him a lot of. He gets the ball over here, and he has a mismatch on an Eastern Kentucky player. And he gets the ball, right? And he likes the spin move. Goes to it. Doesn't get the space. Steps back. And now the help is going to come double, right? Right there. That help. That dude. He's going to come over. Now you're in the double team. So what do you do? You pass it out. You be patient. You try to create something else. But what does he do? Goes to this. Just an, an increasingly difficult shot. And it's just not a wise decision. It's not helping him. That's what's hurting, you know, his overall play. And it, that's that's a lot of the issue. He does have some natural ability. He's shown it a lot. He's got, like I said, the shooting stroke. And you can, you know, score some, obviously. He, he was supposed to be this great player, but... These decisions are just really hurting his draft stock, but, and that's kind of what's you know soiled into everything. But once you know, we'll, we'll look at some of the things he can do well because there are some things, right? You start with three point shooting again. The percentage is not great, but he does show some ability as you know as a spot up shooter, but also a guy who can create it off the bounce. So watch here, right? When when he does get it right, right? Deep step back. Look how much space he's created, right? That's a lot of space. This is good. This is where you want to be taking shots, right? Takes it off and makes it but you see his release like i said the, i like the mechanics like the shooting stroke doesn't really waste too much motion gets the ball up sometimes it looks really really quick when he gets it up uh shooting box shoot yeah, excuse me shooting pocket is pretty low but high release point gets the ball there and but it's his upper body 
kind of it's a little funky kind of his upper body you see it kind of fade back every time uh but either way it is what it is the problem is the shot selection more than that but like i said you, he's got that in his arsenal you can kind of he can dribble the ball create with like that as a spot up shooter as, can get to his spots and you know hit when he's taking those type of shots and he's very good in the mid-range as well. You're going to see here against Robert Morris, which was, I think, probably one of his best, if not the best, game he had this season. And here, Robert Morris, he I mean, he just terrified the zone with his shooting ability. Got in the middle a bunch. And you watch Baldwin, gets that ball in the middle, right, and just immediately shoots. It's perfect, right? I mean, you have good space you around him. He's not this is not a hoisted up contested, you know, one he just threw up there. It's a good look. Good space, good decision, and just within rhythm, catching it and scoring it. Right, throw it here, shoots it, and that's again off the catch. But he can create himself, and this is places where he can take advantage. You talk about that six ten frame and the appeal a lot of a lot of it. And over here, he's over there in that wing side, and he's just gonna elevate over the guy. Right, take a couple dribbles in, watch him right. Yep, go. Doesn't need that much space, and now you can just elevate over, and score. And these are things that you're hoping for. These are things you were looking forward to. A lot of it being laced in with the shot selection, lack of athleticism, I think, because you're not able to create at the same degree. And then here is where you kind of lace in another issue. He does some things well as a finisher. You can finish with either hand, um, displays good footwork, but he plays like he's 6'2", 6 foot. He's, he's, he relies on a floater. He's scared of contact, and a lot of short guys aren't scared of contact, which is really hard to you know, live in today's NBA with, without that. But at 6'10", you, that's not what you want, right? Like I said, he's, he's shying away from contact constantly. But over here, again, before we look at that, we'll look at just you know the things he can do, right? The floater. Over here, here it's kind of from standstill, right? Shoots it. Got a little touch on that. It's, it's somewhat inconsistent. Can make it, though. But even when he's driving, you know, coming off the lane, when, when that second defender kind of comes, a lot of times he likes to go to that floater. Um, over here you see, like I said, it, it's a lot more, you know, finesse game and a lot of those elements. You see him here, right, coming down in transition. So watch the Euro step. I mean, again, great move. Obviously you want to see that. You see that from any player and you'll take it. But the problem is that it's, it's so reliant on that, that it hurts him as a finisher most times. You see him over here, has the ball at the top and then just watch him drive down. And then he, as he gets there. Fades away and just brutally misses. And that's what you see more often than not. He's obviously got some ability and can finish when he has the right angles and so on. But there's a reason that percentage is hitting so low. And a lot of that, again, the finishing ability and the ability not to be able to do that. And shying it from contact is definitely another issue for him, I think. But... Again, with that 6'10 frame, he's he's got he likes to work out of the high post a lot. Milwaukee does a good job. He does a good job of getting mismatches. He really does. He really likes to operate against smaller defenders. It's a smart play, um, and he he can he he works from that turnaround jumper sometimes. I don't know how great of a shot it is in my opinion from just seeing how many he's missed. But he goes to that, or he's got a spin move where he'll work baseline or work toward um, the middle and score again with either hand. You see that here, right? Gets the ball here as leverage spin. And just go again. But again, you see him, right? He's not finishing strong. He's not going into the body. He doesn't want to do that. Over here one more time. You got Baldwin setting the off ball screen. Over there. And then right after that, he's going to set up in that high post. Right, right here. And over here, lets the defender clear, right? Takes that step in. And again, like I said, deceptive quickness where he's not going to overly blow by you, not at all. But when you see his speed and you see his vertical and how just, you know, sluggish it all is, he does, you don't expect that quickness either. But he's got enough to really to create his own shot, right? And you see it here, right? Defender's up in his chest, steps a couple. And again, you like that body control on that and, you know, the ability to score. But it's, it's again, playing like you're six foot. And, and, you know, in a lot of respects, that could be okay to a degree. But when you don't have the athleticism to match it and really justify it, it makes it that much harder. Um, he's averaging an assist and a half per game, but I think he's got, you know, some underrated aspects of his vision as a passer. And you see it here, right? Coming downhill, watch him as he's driving down, you got, all of a sudden you got a two on one, right? Because Baldwin's dri driven it down hard and Baldwin's going to be looking at 24, this guy on the left and look him off and he's going to find the other dude. Just watch how 
just flew what this looks right and this is this is the type of savviness you like All right looks it off and there you go that's stuff you like and it's got a lot of upside in that sort of respect um averaging almost six rebounds a game i, I really like his rebounding because he does stick his body out there again not the greatest vertical so i think it, it's limiting grabbing even more rebounds but what you do love when you look beyond it is just he boxes out his man every single play if he's not the one get grabbing a rebound his man is not going to be grabbing a rebound because he he goes and sticks a body every single time and that was something that may not show up on a stat sheet that i mean won't the times you don't grab a rebound but those are winning plays that coaches will love and you see him here down near that middle this is subtle but just gets a body out and because of that grabs a rebound has really good length. I think, believe it's six two seven two wingspan. Excuse me, which is very good for a guy who's six nine. Um, and you see it a lot with that rebounding. You saw it with the last clip in the, from the high post with him finishing, and you can see it with his defense as well. Uh, but first, you see when you put all those aspects in offense together, right? The ability to grab a rebound and then dribble down. He's got pretty solid handles overall. A little bit of craftiness here and there, but he's just got that ability to bring it down transition. Right, ha gets grabs the ball. And then just starts dribbling down. Again. But over here, right? Nice little pass. And because of that, makes it, they grab a little basket. Very simple and very good. But that's what he gives you on offense. But defense is really another place where he struggles a lot. His one on one defense is very porous. This is definitely another complaint. His, again, I don't know if it's ankle or what it is, but his, or if he just, you know, struggles and because of athleticism, which would make sense as well. But he, he struggles a lot to stick one on one, isn't really able to hold up in that regard. And you see him here, right? He's over there on that wing. Just watch him one on one. Watch defender break him down, go by him, foul. He scores. And over here, same thing, one, one more time. Guy who's got the ball, ball's one's right in front of him, and just watch him take him right off the dribble. Can't stick. Again, and one, and foul. So that sort of one-on-one -on -one defense is definitely difficult and, you know, is a liability 100%. Uh, his length can help him at the next level, just exactly depending on what position he plays as well. Uh, but he's got that length with help, which helps, but that one-on-one -on -one defense is definitely a struggle. Uh, what he does do well is, you know, operate as a team defender, as a help defender, moves really well, is always alert, defense intensity is good. So he's always sliding, he's able to switch, understands those sort of matchups and where to rotate to as a help defender. And he, because of his length, and I think just anticipation, timing, he, he reads out passing lanes pretty well, only averaging 0.8 steals a game. But he looks like when he does grab the steals, he, he's he's looking at eight. You're going to see him right here, just above that elbow area. And as that ball starts dribbling, just watch Baldwin, right? He's reading it, sticks out, and grabs the ball. And here, one more time. So you got Baldwin here right in the middle of the court, and he's going to slide over to that corner as the pick and roll starts happening. And at this point right here, you got Baldwin, right, one more time on that baseline, and then you got the pick and roll happening at the top with the ball. So as soon as it happens, that second defender goes and helps onto him. So this this Milwaukee, def excuse me, this Purdue Fort Worth defense, excuse me, offensive player, over here in that elbow area is running straight to the rim, right? Because the the help defender has to go onto the ball. So Baldwin does just a very good job reading all that and sliding over and grabbing a steal. So you watch, right? As it happens, now you got the guy going. Watch Baldwin right here. He's over there. He's doing exactly what he needs to do as a weak side help defender, right? He's just reading that play, right? Slides over, steals that ball away. And that's just textbook perfect exactly what you want so you know we talked about this with Luca as well when he came out of the draft um there is his lateral quickness is always going to be a work in progress and difficulty one-on-one -on -one, but he's so his IQ is really off the charts and so he was a good team defender switched really well understood rotations all those things and in today's NBA you'll, you'll take that to a degree because it's not just about one-on-one -on -one defense anymore it's it's your your switching and your rotations and understanding team defense effort are really you know a lot of times in a lot of respects outweighing that sort of lateral quickness and one on one which definitely helps in Baldwin's favor but overall there are a lot of things to kind of like with him but obviously you're really putting in a big big <laughs> question mark when you bring in the athleticism and the shot selection but it's not just shot selection it's the fact that when he's given that sort of role 
when he came from high school to college, he's given that role of being able to being needed, or excuse me, needing to create that sort of those sort of shots. And if his his percentages dipped to you know low forties, it'd be okay. You know, you kind of you understand, but it's not. And a lot of looks that even ones that aren't considered bad shots, shot selection that he's taking just aren't hitting as well. And that's why your percentage is so bad. And it's it's a constant to do that. And, and again, he's it's all a lot of those contested pull-ups. And the reason you're seeing them is because he's not able to create other shots and get to the rim and those sorts of things. That's the concerning aspect. And that's why it's really hard to project him as, you know, a star player, as a number one option, number two option even. I think he could project as a very good role when you talk about those physical tools, the length and size. He'll probably definitely get easier shots. Uh, can do some of those things, rebound, help you, and can create in a lot of different ways. Right? Can post up when he's got smaller matchups, like we see with a lot of role players nowadays and the role that they play. So I think Baldwin can really fit that mold. Again, is he going to be a lottery pick? No, I think he's sliding. How far we slide, we'll see. Once we get there, I could see low first round just based on his length and his you know combine numbers. But it will be interesting to see how he goes. Um, but that's the, uh, wrap on Patrick Baldwin. I uh, hope you guys enjoyed the video for the full scouting report, which shall, should be out soon. Go to dbl-coverage.com. There'll be a full scouting report on him and on a bunch of other players. So hope you guys enjoyed the video. Have a great day.